today's episode of the Doberman Connection, we're going to be discussing the cosmic canine. And we're going to look at it from the perspective of the zodiac, um, that being astrology, specifically the elements. The elements in astrology are earth, water, fire, and air. I'm going to break this into a two-part series because there's just so much to talk about. And we're going to start with earth and water. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with the elements as they relate to the zodiac, the earth signs are Capricorn, Virgo, and Taurus, and and not necessarily in that order. And um, the water signs are Pisces, Scorpio, and Cancer. We're starting there because our pups are Capricorn and Cancer, Um, with Lyric being the Capricorn. Her birthday was Jan. Well, her birthday is January 14th. And Bishop and Jada are our water signs. They are Cancers and their birthdays are June 21st. Um, In this episode, you can expect us to go kind of in depth on the earth and water signs. We're going to talk about their personalities because really they track very closely to the personalities of human beings with the the same signs. Um, For those of you all who don't know, Damien and I have been married for 17 years. And one thing that we share in common is a love for the Zodiac. I probably was more into it than Damien. What would you say? Much more into it. But I feel like I've converted you over the years. I started learning about it, just being around it for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was slow and coming. But yeah, there's it's some, definitely some relevance to it. Yeah, so I've, I've I've made him a believer over time, and he has some really interesting insights as well. But we don't want you all to just take our word for it. I'm going to reference this book. I found this book at a bookstore, a used bookstore here in Atlanta, Georgia, called the Book Nook. I don't know if they exist everywhere, but I always buy my books secondhand. That's a topic for another episode. But I always buy my books secondhand. And this book was um, written in 1989. The name of the book is What Sign Is Your Pet? And the author is Dr. Donald Wolf. Now, I'm not saying that this book is going to hold all of the answers, but I just think it's interesting to look at it from another perspective. So we'll be referring to that as well. Okay, so before we jump into the topic, Damien, I have a question for you. And we're both going to answer this question, so I'm not just going to put you on the spot. Mm -hmm. The question is, what do you appreciate the most about water signs, just in general? And those water signs being, what do we say, Pisces, Scorpio, and And Cancer. cancer. Uh huh. What do you appreciate most about those signs? And also, what do you appreciate most, most about Earth signs, which are Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus, and why? Hmm. I like the fact that Pisces is creative, their creative abilities, Um, a lot of artists are Pisces signs, so I definitely appreciate that. I I do appreciate the arts, you know, um, me being a Pisces as well, Um, but on the cusp, so I felt like I didn't get all of the artistic side to it. What are you on the cusp of? Um, Pisces and Aries. Yeah. So, um, just their, their, like I said, their, their artistic abilities, their ability to communicate, their abilities to, you know, show their, show exactly how they're feeling. You know, you don't have to really guess when it comes to a Pisces, you know, they kind of show their- Just Pisces or water signs in general? Water signs in general, just show their, show their true colors or show their emotions. They wear wear it on their sleeve, you know, it's kind of- Well, they're really, um- there's a lot of criticism about that with water signs. Like they don't show you all any mercy. They make you all look weak and just very just. I think people are intimidated by water signs. Okay. Why is that? Because, you know, we kind of do show our emotions on our sleeves. So it kind of lets people know 
where they be me messing up or where they where they're in their wrongs, you mm-hmm. know, and, and people don't like that. People like to move in in a way that they want to move and not understand how it affects other people just in their day to day. And when you come across across a pie, or come across a water sign, you know you um, kind of you got to watch how you move because that person is going to kind of let you know in so many ways that what you said or what you're doing is affecting them, you know, and water signs also don't have no problems, you know, keeping these, their circles small. If they, if, okay. So if a person comes, you come across a, a person that's affecting you as a water sign and you don't see this person, person changing at all or making any adjustments to, make the situation maybe better or your day-to-day relationship with this person better. A Pisces has no problems turning their back on that person, mm-hmm. you know, or a water sign in general. I'm just talking, keep on saying Pisces because that's why I am, but water signs have no problems turning their back on, turn, turning their back on those people. So and you appreciate that about them? Their ability yeah. to just be transparent, keep it real, mm-hmm. have their feelings on their s- sleeves. It sounds like you like, the fact that there's there's not a lot of guessing when it comes to water signs. Exactly. How do you feel like Bishop and Jada embody that, and 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 what do you appreciate most about them? I don't appreciate any of that really within Bishop and Jada, especially with Bishop because I feel like he is whines a lot. You know, he <laughs> always whining about something. Um, dogs are a little bit different because I feel like. Just in general, I think the 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 male dog is a uh, Doberman is a more more emotional creature, and you know I can't really judge that. I can't really say that it's, it's a it's a zodiac sign or if it's just a male dog sign because I'm only owned one male Doberman so who happens to be a Cancer. Who happens to be a Cancer? Which, right? I, in my opinion, they're drag the most, especially in, in social media. Cancer males are just the Drakes of. Um, mm. The Zodiac, according to... Well, he's definitely a Drake of the... Uh, mm-hmm. He's definitely the Drake of the Zodiac sign. I'll tell you that. Well, the thing is, Drake is a Scorpio, and that is a water sign. So, so you're saying that human beings, we can be emotional, you appreciate that, but you don't appreciate that Bishop is emotional. He is emotional. He's clingy. He always needs to be don't pet him like too much because then he's gonna expect that all day long every day all day he's gonna expect to be just he can he can sit there between your legs all day and you can pet him for three hours straight and you stop petting him he'll be right back over to you in like 10 minutes yeah like you want to pet me again right yeah he just doesn't doesn't ever get enough of attention from us and it's and you would you would think coming in not knowing any better, you would think that we don't give him any attention. He gets the most attention of all the dogs in the house, and it's never enough. He solicits the attention, so that's that's why he gets it. He's always underfoot. He's always there. So I agree. But he and Jada have the same birthday. They're both ca- cancers. Um, so what qualities does Jada exhibit exhibit as a water sign that you appreciate? Hmm. Jada, I guess she's she's more of a introvert, so she's really to herself. Which you will see in water signs. You'll see that you know sometimes you'll see people that will be, and that's where the artistic side comes along because they're a little bit more in tune with what's going on in their head, and that's enough for them. They don't need to be um, entertained by anybody outside. Or they don't need to, better yet, they don't even need to entertain anybody else. Their brain is enough entertainment for themselves. <laughs> right. And I feel like that's the best description for Jada. Jada yeah. has been talked about as she is mean, standoffish, bougie, um, you know, just not a good dog. When really, she just to herself. But it's a good balance because you have Bishop who is just super, super clingy versus her his litter mate Jada, who is complete opposite, does not need much attention. This morning she came to me and, and was wanting to get petted, and that's the first time she maybe like once a week she'll go through a little phase like that. But other than that, she just kind of off on her own. That's true, but she is emotional, 
and she is moody. You never know what you're going to get from her, which right. your example pretty much highlights or underscores the fact that when she wants to be petted, she wants to be petted. When she wants to be left alone, she makes it no se- no secret that she wants to be left alone. I mm-hmm. um, a lot of people perceive her as being like mean or a bad dog when she growls. And this is her emotions, wearing her emotions on her sleeve, um, where she doesn't feel like being bothered and she's not going to pretend like she wants, Right. she's not going to try to appease you. It's, it's not about you. It's about mm-hmm. her and how she feels. So I feel like that tracks pretty closely to your earlier description and of just, water signs. And just externally, when you look at her, she just looks like a very intimidating, mean dog. She just doesn't, she's just very like stern yeah she has very sharp features so bishop and jada are both american doberman they are a red american doberman and um they do they have a really kind of sharp look if you're not familiar with the breed they can look intimidating they can look mean but bishop to your point he just has like a dopier look Mm. about him whereas jada has a very like intense look about her just aesthetically yeah so, okay, well, we don't want to spend so much time on them. What about earth signs? We're going to start with people. Like, what do you appreciate about earth signs? The same thing that I appreciate in earth signs is the same thing I cannot stand sometimes is how grounded earth signs are. It just gets on my nerves. There's no changing to them. If you want a person around you that can, you know, validate anything that you're trying to say that is is relevant and you're trying to prove a point then if an earth sign is on your side then go to them but if an earth sign is going against the grain on what you're trying to a uh, point that you're trying to make or a comment that you're trying to get validated and the earth sign does not believe in what you're saying don't even try to convince them anything because they're not going to change and like I said that is just what really gets on my nerves. It just takes so long to chip away at them. The, um, I guess it can, you can compare it to like, you know, an island in the middle of the ocean and it's there. There's no blowing up that island. It's just going to be there. And the water can chip away and chip away and chip away and chip away and it can chip away at this island for years. But you know what? You can come back 20, 30 years later and that island is still going to be there. And that's an earth sign. And you appreciate that. It and I can't very stand negative. it at the same time. Okay, so for those of you who don't know or didn't catch earlier, I don't know if I said it or not, but I'm a Capricorn, which is an earth sign. So he has a lot of experience with us. Um, some of that I agree with. Some of it I don't. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I think you have a point. I think you have a point. I, I think that it's very, um, I don't know, counterproductive for people to reject just reality (laughs) which is like and and that's what Capricorns do we just kind of keep it real we focus on reality it's it just things are it just is what it is as long as it's reality in your sense no but but if it's but we're well researched usually usually we have some type of backing and if you come to us with information that makes sense we will change our opinions and that's the part i don't believe mm. about the blowing up the you can't blow up the island well you can't blow it up because we're still going to be there however i don't think it's a foolish stubbornness it's a i feel like we can be moldable like clay like think of it like the features of clay or the characteristics of clay um, but you just got to put enough water on it. And you you are my water. You are the water to oh my, my clay. Um, and very emotional. Obviously, I said, what do you appreciate? And you immediately spun it to be what you don't appreciate. I, I, it's, just, it's just get on my nerves, man. <laughs> but that's okay. And it's not even you. It's, it's not even Capricorns. It's every earth sign that I know is just like, okay. You know everything. Okay. We have our roots. Our and roots you're gonna are sit there and try to firmly pl- planted. Firmly planted in in the but ground. growing at the same time, growing the wrong way. <laughs> that's not true. I disagree. But you okay. can have roots to a tree that's growing up instead of down. You ever seen a tree 
that it got another couple other trees coming out of it. That's a Capricorn. It's just one to grow over. Who you know? They just it's just too much. It's just too much. It's, it's just too much. Growing the wrong way. Growing the wrong way. It's never growing the right way. It's always just growing. It's the growing wrong the right way, way sometimes. <laughs> Because you need to clarify. Because I sometimes I mean, it does. I'm sometimes triggered. Sometimes you get a nice, beautiful tree that's going to be there. And it's always it's a beautiful bonsai shade. tree. But see, that's the problem with earth signs. They always think everything is a beautiful bonsai tree, and sometimes you get a little ugly, raggedy tree <laughs> that's in the corner of your yard that you got to sit there and try to <laughs> cut it down, and they got about six different trees growing out of it. Because oh you know my why? Because it didn't know what it wanted to be, Mm-mm-mm. and that is. Earth sign, and that's definitely um, what I'm seeing coming out of Lyric. Okay, so Lyric was blessed to also be born as a Capricorn. Hallelujah. Or a curse, however you want to look at Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. Yeah. I see her just being doggedly determined, no pun intended. Anytime she wants something, she's going to go after it. There's no stopping her. Um, and, yeah, it's like if, if she wants it, she's going to get it. Even if it takes a little bit of sacrifice and pain, which is very characteristic of Capricorns and earth signs in general, we're just hard workers. Her energy could be a little bit misdirected at times um, because she's a puppy and she does crazy puppy things. But um, a good example is recently she's been limping around here. Now we've seen this behavior in Bishop when he was a puppy. So Bishop is now four years old, but when he was a puppy, he would have these like little aches and pains and be kind of limping and just, we're not sure what's going on with him. Um, but I think it just comes with like your larger breeds that are growing to be pretty large at a, at a quick pace. So they have growing pains, but she's been limping around here for two or three days. And we're like, what the heck is going on now? Mind you, she's not making a big deal about, this paw issue that she's having. We just kind of noticed it. She's just kind of hanging it there. Whereas Bishop, when he would limp around and he would have any type of ache or pain, ache or pain, he would pretty much come to you like, look at, look at my paw. I hurt my paw. Just very, just needs the attention, needs you to know, very pitiful. She's not like that. She's still trying to run around here and do all the things, even though she's clearly in some sort of pain. But anyway, this was a mystery to us. Like what is it just growing pains or does something happen? You know, we're thinking about like, okay, next week we're going to have to get her to the vet if this doesn't subside in a few days. Anyway, fast right, forward. Because you have to, okay, right. And, and just let me piggyback on that because I don't want our audience to think that we're ignoring her pain. No, not but at all. Bishop went through, and this is where you learn from, with these dogs. Bishop went through the same thing. I feel like it was a growth spurt that he was going through, and he was limping around here for about a week, week and a half when he was about that same age, and Jada would not leave him alone. Oh, no, she wouldn't. She was picking on him so bad. She capitalized on his yes. injury for sure. Yeah. And, you know, and finally got him out of it. And he, no, but we panicked, and we took him, and to, took the him vet. to the vet. And the vet was just like. Nothing was wrong. Nothing wrong with him, just. You know, they just go through growth spurts, I think. And we paid uh, maybe about... Probably about $200. Yeah, we probably paid about $200 to find out that nothing was wrong with him. So this time around, we're working smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. So we're like, well, let's just observe her before we go pay somebody $200 just to say she's growing. Anyway, fast forward. We go in our backyard, and there is a massive hole. And for context... Jada and Bishop were never, they never really would dig like that. Um, Yeah, so she she did her thing now (laughs) to her detriment. Right. But she did it. But as she gets older, she'll mature and she'll learn not to hurt herself when she's working really hard, which is something that I had to learn as well to kind of loosen up just a little bit um, and, and know that I could, accomplish goals without completely like killing myself to get there because I'm the type I'll work day and night and day and night and, and not stop obsessively researching, obsessively studying, um, obsessively just writing or whatever. But that's always been my personality. But because of that, I've been able to accomplish a lot of things. I have a master's degree in psycho 
um, not in, not in psychotherapy, but I have a master's degree in counseling psychology. Um, but then I also went on to get my project management certification, the PMP, on my own um, via YouTube University. I, I would just study all day and all night for a couple of months. And then I went in and took that test and finished it in like 45 minutes, just knocked it out the park. Six Sigma, but you know, enough about me. And Damien's sitting here rolling his eyes because he's a hater of all haters. Even though he does support me, truly, I don't want it to come across that he doesn't. But I think that sometimes the frustration can be just that very strong work ethic. To kill yourself to to accomplish something. And as, as a water sign, there's other ways to, to go about accomplishing things. You don't need to kill yourself. I can agree with that. And I don't I'm, think you agree with that. Because, I do. Because you always go about it the same way. Well, I think it's more of a habit, and but I don't. I, I recognize that it's something that I need to get better about. And I feel like I've gotten better. I don't know. You think I've been exactly the same for 20 years is what it sounds like. But I disagree with that. I've changed my approach in a lot of different ways. Yes or no? A I've bit. Always, uh, a lot. A bit. A lot. But that work ethic serves me. And I'm proud of who I am. I'm okay with it. That's what it's about. As long as you're okay with you. <laughs> I was belching. <laughs> well, enough about us and, and what we think. Let's let's go into what Dr. Donald Wolf thinks about signs, specifically when it comes to our pets, because that's why we're here. We're not here to talk about us. We're here to talk, discuss our pets. So I'm going to start and just spoiler alert. I'm reading this. Um, so I'm not going to pretend like I'm not. So sit back and relax and just enjoy this like you're listening to a chapter of an audiobook because that's what you're about to get right now. So where should we start, Damien? With the, I think maybe we should start with um, our cancer dogs, our water sign dogs. But I don't want to be too, you know, pushy. So what do you think? We can start with the cancer. That makes sense. We started talking about them first. Okay. So check this out. So this is what's really funny. So right now I am on the chapter about the cancer pet. And I don't know if Damien has seen this. I don't think so. But the title of this chapter is the sensitive type. Okay. And it has a picture of a dog, which looks like maybe a collie or something. And it's crying and it has tissues, a box of tissues. Um, and this is your cancer pet. Check it out. That's super funny. That's about right. That's hilarious. So the cancer pet, the birthday is the birthday for cancers fall between June 22nd and July 22nd. The cancer personality. Cancer born pets have the moon as their planetary ruler. Very appropriate since their moods change with the moon causing them to be noticeably temperamental. Not prima donnas, you understand. They're too cautious and mild-mannered for outrageous drama, but they do sense alternatives in emotional temperature with unerring swiftness and react accordingly. Cancer-born pets are so sensitive to their surroundings, in fact, that their emotional state will always, almost always reflect the emotional atmosphere of the home. Their ability to mirror an owner's feelings is remarkable indeed. If you are happy, they are happy. If you get upset, they get upset. And when cancer pets are disturbed by upheavals of any kind, they disappear silently to their favorite retreat and may well stay there for hours, even days. Usually, cancer pets are calm, quiet, docile homebodies. They are quick to anger, anger but they don't fight vicious, viciously or become mean. A mild growl is the usual extent of their fury. Cancer-born pets are afraid of any animal, human or otherwise, that is bigger than they. Hmm. <laughs> Cancers are not fighters and will avoid any confrontation that makes them feel uneasy. They instinctively detect aggressive opponents, too. Are cancers unsociable? Yes and no. 
Certainly cancer born pets are cautious when meeting your friends. They need to see a genuinely inviting response before they approach anyone. They go by their first impression and stick to it. If your cancer pet hasn't taken to a guest on a first visit to your home, odds are it never will. For this reason, your cancer may be, may be disliked by some, admired by others, especially those who know just where to scratch an ear or tickle a chin. Cancers are quite affectionate to people in whom they've developed a trust and will gladly take all the fondling and petting such accepted friends can dish out. Cancer pets fear not only strangers, but also loud noises, Fireworks on the 4th of July, sonic booms, rainstorms, and loud arguments can all send the cancer pet scurrying under the bed where it will tremble and cry like a mouse in a lion's cage. Cancer-born pets are the most persistent, most accurate enemies in the Zodiac. They never, ever forget unkind acts. Cancer's grudges are famous. Though usually responsive to acts of kindness, a cancer pet will never make friends with a previous adversary, even if tempted with favored treats or foods. Cancer pets do not like to share their home with other animals. They need to feel that their home environments are secure and stable, and any change will be met with a negative response. They especially resent sharing food, treats, or toys and will not willingly relinquish any of their possessions, no matter how insignificant. Try to, pr try to persuade them otherwise, and you may see your cancer-born pet become violent, although the most characteristic cancer response is to go away and soak. Um, so I'm going to skip forward to the cancer summary. It says, if your household is busy and hectic, the cancer-born pet will have trouble adapting. An Aries or Gemini would be better suited for you. Cancer pets do better in calm, quiet surroundings. They are very gentle and will make fine companions for children, even infants. They need lots of physical affection and respond to kindness. They don't do well at all when kept outdoors. They need a warm and secure home. All right, so what's your reaction to that? Let's start with just the intro about the cancer personality. What stood out to you? Well, that was the part where they're talking about the um, the growl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what stood out to me. Um, Jada Jada is loves to growl, mm -hmm. and it means nine times out of ten means absolutely positively nothing. She just wants to hear herself mumble about some stuff. Mm -hmm. And even when she gets into like, uh, you know, quote unquote argument with her, with Jay or with Lyric, you know, cause Lyric and her are the two female dogs. Um, and Lyric will walk away. Jada will continue to growl for as long as she, until she gets over it. Yeah. She's just thinking about it. Right. Like thinking about like the audacity. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. She will. She will sit there and growl and growl and growl at nothing. And it'll be so annoying. Yeah. What stood out to me is the part about the loud noises. Now, I know there are some skeptics out there who are saying, well, my dog is in a cancer and, and they also don't like fireworks. A lot of dogs don't like fireworks. And that's true. You know, this, of course, there are exceptions to everything that we're describing here. But I do find it ironic that Jada is horrified of fireworks and rain. Rain, thunderstorms, yes. especially. However, Bishop is not. So, again, to my point that it's not a blanket diagnosis for every cancer pet. But um, Jada is definitely that way. And also a little bit unsociable. Mm-hmm. Very much unsociable. She doesn't. She doesn't really mess with too many people. Um, like you said, just if you want to know if it's gonna rain or not, if it's like clouding up and it's about to rain, you can just tell by the dogs in the house, especially from her in the house because yeah. she gets really, really nervous and just fidgety. Yeah, and and clingy. So she's always underfoot. Usually she's not underfoot, but when there's going to be 
a storm or anything like that, she does start to come around. She'll, we'll both be working. We both work from home mm-hmm. and um, she'll be under the desk just at our feet, which usually she's on her own and pretty independent. So we'll know that a storm's a brewing, a brewing. Um, right. Yeah. Because she starts to behave that way. So for sure, in terms of the, the part about their home environments and how they respond to that, I feel like all animals are that way, that all animals are pretty much conduits or like mediums for what's going on in the home. Mm-hmm. I can tell a lot about a family and what's occurring in their home based on the behavior of their animals. So even if they're really, really nice folks, Mm -hmm. if their dog is displaying some behaviors that are not nice, I'm knowing that something is going on behind the scenes that isn't right. Um, And I'll launch into that later, but I kind of want to stick on the cancer piece. Bishop, Bishop does not like any type of drama. He is the peacekeeper around this house. We can't even play with each other. It's no play fighting. It's no loud arguments, anything like that, because he's going to come running and jumping on us and just really, we don't know what he's going to (laughs) do. The only problem we've ever had with Bishop occurred when our daughters, two of our youngest daughters, they were maybe 16 and 17 at the time. Um, the 16 year old was the daughter that he was pretty close with. Um, but the two, the two girls were arguing with each other and we noticed him getting kind of edgy, like restless, kind of like pacing around, running up and down the stairs. And we're like, you know, look, y'all need to calm down, you know, figure out whatever is going on. This is what we're telling our daughters. So they proceed to continue to argue and escalate to the point where the 17 year old jumps in the 16 year old's face. Mm-hmm. And at that point, Bishop bit her. Um, we had never would have never thought that would happen. But I, I know that there are some people who feel like, Oh, well, you know, maybe that just makes them a, a bad dog. And I know that when I was growing up, the, the myth was that if a dog tastes blood, then they just kind of go insane and they, they crave it. They just become these like monsters. But what I observed, because we were completely mortified when it happened, everyone was just mortified. And what I observed was him looking as shocked as we were right. that it happened. He ran off, obviously very, very ashamed of his behavior and just ran into his cage and was in the cage shaking for hours afterwards. It didn't seem that he enjoyed it or that it triggered anything within him. Um, And he knew that he had done something wrong. And honestly, as big as he is about how many pounds is Bishop? Uh, Bishop's about 85, about 85 pounds. Yeah. At his his agility and his strength and his power and his size, he really could have just torn her apart if he wanted to, but he got one good, good bite on her, on her arm and like realized what he did and ran away. Mm -hmm. And as I was saying, he was in his, his cage shaking, completely mortified. We're completely mortified. I'm feeling like, what kind of parent would I be to just not get rid of this dog? Because that's just a, the common conception. Like, oh, your dog bites somebody just, but the circumstances were such that I had to explain to the kids, like, look, dogs can't talk. <laughs> you know, they, they, they can't necessarily, necessarily understand what's happening. They're picking up on your energy and the energy that he picked up on. He doesn't know that you all are just two sis- sisters having an argument to him. His, favorite sister is in danger and you know it's going down and he's a dog and he did a dog thing Um, but trust and believe I was very very conflicted because at the end of the day I love my kids and I don't want them to be in any type of danger and harm's way so anyway he went to his cage he's shaking in his cage and when he finally starts to come out he's 
like is creeping around with his head down and he walks up to the daughter that he bites and he's like gently like licking her hand as if to apologize to her and has never bitten her or anyone else again. But we know you better keep it, All keep right. it positive around here because you don't know what he, if we don't know what he's going to do, you can't be in here getting bucked because he's going to pick up on that energy. It really makes him uncomfortable and he's going to respond in kind like he did. So that was a lesson learned for us. That was maybe two years ago and we've never had any issues. And it was actually something we kept secret from a lot of people because it was just because of the perceptions. I know people who would have put their dog down for that, but um, we observed it and we made the call that he realized what he did and we've never had the sense that he was going to do anything like that again. But we also check ourselves. Right. <laughs> We're not in here hollering and screaming. Uh, we, we keep it peaceful around here just to, to respect the fact that we have these animals that may not understand what's going on. And who doesn't want to have a peaceful house? Yeah. So to have a dog to enforce that. It, it worked out. It works out. It worked out. So. But yeah, I'm, I, this is my first time publicly admitting this. Um, but yeah, it, it was a hard time. But but those are the things that that stood out to me. But I don't want to spend too much time on cancer dogs. We need to go over Capricorn and um, yeah, just keep it moving. The chapter about the Capricorn pet is forever young. And pictured here is some dog. I don't know what breed it is. It's, it's a drawing. But the dog has his tongue hanging out its mouth and um, a hat, one of those old school hats that would have like the, the spinning helicopter thing on top mm -hmm. of it. So you check it out. So that's the picture. Yeah, that's definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the Capricorn pet. Capricorn pets were born between December 22nd and January 19th with um, Lyric's birthday was or is January 14th. All right, so let's get into it. The Capricorn personality. Easygoing Capricorn pets are a little on the shy side, even a bit withdrawn. They like to observe a new situation for a while before mingling and tend to hold back vocally as well. Capricorn born pets will not bark just to hear their own voices and will not keep you up all night long. When they bark, there's a reason and it's usually a complaint. Strongly committed and loyal to their owners, Capricorns are predictable and consistent in all responses. However, Capricorn pets do get the blues regularly. At, time, the at times, the term sourpuss seems invented just for them. Capricorn pets tend to live far beyond anyone's expectations. Even your pet's veterinarian will be surprised at your Capricorn's longevity. This is worth noting from when your pet reaches geriatric age, you may be faced with major medical decisions. It is always worth treating the older Capricorn pet's medical problems, even if the prognosis is poor. Capricorn pets have a full nine lives to draw upon. They rebound from illnesses in the face of all odds. Your Capricorn pet thrives on praise. You must be very eager to show outward physical approval for even the smallest deeds well done. This will help to keep the pet's behavior consistent, which is basic to its nature. Your Capricorn pet will readily develop a daily routine aimed at eliciting your praise. The Capricorn pet prefers quiet, familiar surroundings. This is not to say that you shouldn't have people or other animals over to your house your Capricorn's cautious side will become apparent when this occurs, but it will soon find acceptable ways to blend in. You can feel safe to take it visiting with you. Capricorn pets will rarely cause embarrassment to their owners. Just be sure to give them reassurance that their normal behavior is noticed and appreciated. Capricorns will submit willing, willingly to their owner's request. They are not stubborn flexibility of temperament being one of their strong points once they determine what type of behavior is acceptable to their owners you must be patient however 
for Capricorns are slow learners. They have a lot of persistence and training sessions can last much longer than with other animals. Methodical and precise in their movements and thoughts, Capricorns will eventually achieve what is asked of them. Lavish them with praise along the way, and although they are plotters, the extra time that you can spend with them will result in advancements and training. To love to take their owners with them on their adventures. They may be patiently sitting at the door for, the, for you to let them outside. Then when you open the door, they continue to sit there looking eagerly at you. This is an invitation to come out and play. It will be hard to resist their childlike offer. Capricorn dogs are driven to digging. They master the art of excavation early. This is a difficult habit to break and you will have better luck in redirecting it than in stopping it. I have even had desperate owners ask me to declaw Capricorn dogs. This is, of course, a drastic measure. I know that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> and is avoidable if you will do the following. Now, I didn't read this. I'm, I'm glad for we've run across this because this is very helpful. Um, designate one area in the corner of your yard or elsewhere as the mining area. Allow digging here and discourage it in other areas. The placing of mothballs in small holes where undesirable digging takes place will help to keep your Capricorn pet in the assigned area. Also, save cigarette butts, cigar butts, or other tobacco and put it in the ends of old nylons. Hang these digging repellents on your fragile bushes or plants to prevent their destruction. Your Capricorn pet will soon get the point. Mm. Interesting, right? Yeah. Okay, so... Let's move forward to the Capricorn summary. If you are looking for an obedient pet, one that will play with the kids and live to a ripe old age, Capricorn is for you. You will need some extra time, patience, and affection when you first acquire a little Capricorn. So be prepared. All right. So a couple of things stood out there to me. Yeah, obvious. Okay. <laughs> Since you mentioned it earlier, we got a, a hole that she tried to dig like she's... Shawshank Redemption, trying to get out the, <laughs> dig a hole under the under the tunnel under the um, wall. So the digging part is actually pretty good. I didn't know about the mothballs and the uh, designated area. I didn't know that was known for these type of dogs. I've never had a dog that digs the way she does. I've never all my life. Yeah, I've never seen a dog that digs. She loves every time I go out there. It's a new hole. And another thing for dog owners too, it's not so much the digging. But then if you are in a an area where um she digs a lot, he or she digs a lot, and then that that um that dog spends a lot of time in the backyard and you know, rain throughout the time, whatever, and that hole fills up with water. You gotta you gotta remedy that. You gotta figure out something that would do with that because I feel like that has caused Especially with the girls that get um, urinary tract infections. That's true. By drinking, because they'll drink the water out mm -hmm. of that hole. Yeah. So they, because they're drinking the water out of that hole so they can continue to dig more. Mm -hmm. That's their digging hole. So they want to get the water out of there. So they drink it and it's all dirty bacteria water. And especially in our backyard with the, with the Georgia clay, you know, type dirt and mud. And um, and then they're also just thirsty. And I don't they're, th think just they're thirsty too, but it's it's more of a get out of my way so I can continue digging because that's their mm. you know I don't know there's there's so many spots in the backyard that I've had to cover up with rocks and different bricks and just different ways and she just moves on to another place and starts digging. It's crazy. Yeah, it really we, we is. can try the mothball thing. We can try the cigarette butts thing, um, and and just report back to our listeners if it worked or not. Right. But I'm, I'm glad we ran right. across that little tidbit. Um, in the interest of time, I didn't go through the entire chapter, but one part that I did read said that Capricorn animals have a tendency to eat inedible objects, which, was mm. very, yeah, I know, mm -hmm. right? Which blew my mind because Lyric, unlike Jada and Bishop, is always eating something yeah. that is not food. Cloth. Socks. She loves she loves it. Underwear, socks. She has a way of destroying a, a toy and she'll eat the 
inside like the, the batting the, the the yeah yeah like the, the stuffing the stuffing yeah that's mm-hmm. what I said before. Mm-hmm. um and then you know her stomach gets upset it was a couple weeks ago i was over there all night because she has this blanket it's a halloween blanket and it says boo all over it and that's her boo blanket <laughs> well she starts eating it eating the blanket not just and, chewing on it eating and, and i didn't realize what she was doing i thought she was just chewing on it no she was chewing on it but she was eating the parts of it and her stomach got all messed up and she was you know throwing up and she was just kind of, and then after she threw up the first time, she was kind of hacking on the second time and stuff like that. So I ended up being up with her pretty much all night because I don't like waking up the next morning to a whole bunch of mess. So I'd rather monitor it throughout the night. This is kind of how I am. And, um, yeah, so it, that's that's interesting. What sound, what you read, and then also on, on a good note, though, they're very um, sociable dogs, and that's kind of what they mentioned there too, as, they as said far that as they're being, a little shy and even a bit withdrawn. I didn't, I didn't I don't agree get with that. that. From them at no, all. no, no. Um, but one thing with Dobermans too is, and this is, it's kind of a, a situation we're dealing with right now with my my oldest, um, her boyfriend, you know, has a daughter, and she's like five or six or something like that, and um, lyric is just completely and totally obsessed with her. Well. He's a little bit intimidated by dogs. He don't really understand dogs. Let's put it like that. And um, she is a little bit hot and cold being a little girl. Yeah, I she's only it. three years old, and she's almost pretty much the oh, size. She's three? Yeah, she's three. Oh, I thought she was five or six. Like yeah, no, no, she's um, three. And she's about the size of, I mean, Lyric, Lyric is, is almost, yeah, not eye to eye, but close. very close. And so, and Lyric would never bite her or nothing. He, If anything, she's very will like kind of get on you just to force you to pet her. You know, she has a way of like pinning you down and making you pet her almost. And as an adult, that's kind of, it's kind of dope. But as a little girl, I can see why she would get intimidated by it. But it's just like, I don't want to hold her back because I feel like, you know, and I, I think we kind of went into this a little bit about the difference between a working dog and, and a uh, home dog. I feel like Lyric, Lyric is more of a, a working Doberman where you don't want to hold her back because now she's looking at this as a target. Yeah, she's a, really determined now. Determ- yeah, determined to get to her. And I don't want her aggression to come off and hurt the little girl. Right. So it's just like... Because they respond to your energy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so now we're, it's like when a, we're acting nervous and afraid and holding her and they're yeah. acting nervous and afraid, it, it's just... You know, the, the dogs, they yeah. can only feel and only read energy and they're like picking up on it. Yeah. It's something wrong. And then going into that, too, a little bit as well, too, is this. And I see this with Dobermans. It's like they do not like to be kept away from human interaction. No. So if you're having a get together or a party or something like that, do not. I repeat, do not invite anybody over there or warn them before you invite them or warn them with the invitation that do are scared of dogs. If they're scared of dogs, they don't need to be around. Yeah. Because these dogs are going to, you can't leave them in the backyard. You can't leave them in the cage. They are going to disrupt the whole party. Even if you do that, they're going to be so loud and, and so aggressive and so irritated that they're going to interrupt the whole party. You're going to have to let them out. You're going to have, have to allow them to socialize. The best way to do that, though, is to you know, allow them to be around the party in the beginning Mm -hmm. as the party gets going. And then eventually they'll get used to everybody and they'll just eventually just go off and probably lay down and go to sleep. But the more you keep them away, the more determined they are to get to that. And they, they resent it because it's so different from our normal pattern. Right. Um, And that, that's why I really disagree with what the book says about them being withdrawn Capricorn dogs because she's so outgoing. She's very outgoing. Even the, the breeder, um, they that we purchased her from had descriptions of all of the puppies and their personalities and the personality of Lyric according to the, the breeder was that she was outgoing and she is she's mm-hmm. a very very outgoing um, pup Yeah, and I think also what really confuses people or, or, or what um, kind of turns them off is that she's so big that they don't appreciate that she's a puppy Mm -hmm. like people understand that intellectually but they're really not 
it's not connecting in their brain that she's a puppy. So right. yeah, we, we try, we're always respectful of, of people who come around. We don't want our dogs jumping on people. Bishop and Jada don't, but Lyric is still young and she's still learning, but people see her and they think automatically they interact with her as if she's an older dog mm-hmm. and it, it can be problematic because she's still just a baby but she is very playful, very loving, um, very determined, and really good around kids. And, and I, I would say she's more social than Jada and Bishop are. Would you agree with that? I would say so. Yeah. I would say so. Uh, she's, she was, she's very different. Well, let's, let me back up. And the breeder, the breeder's derma determination, I mean, the, the breeder's description of the dogs was tested. And she was kind of explaining this to me where, you know, there's there when they're six, seven, eight weeks old, she'll take them out and she'll throw like a beach ball. And there was 12 of them. You know, J, um, Lyric is one of 12. She'll throw like a big old beach ball, which is huge to them, you know? Yeah. And, She'll take note on which ones will not leave the beach ball alone until they can figure out how to control oh, oh, it. Oh wow, she she explained this to you. Yeah. Oh, this is new information to me. And okay. So, and that's how she ranks their level of determination. Mm. And so, when Lyric was a puppy, um, she wouldn't. Her and there was like a couple other other girls would not leave this beach ball alone where the other ones will kind of play with it for a while. And then they'll just get bored with it. Like, okay, it's bigger than me. I can't mess with it. No, there are, there's ways to, to there's ways to, um, to, you know, judge or, or, you know, judge the, the level of determination by doing stuff like that. And, and Lyric would not leave the beach ball alone. And there was a couple other ones too. I think her sister, the green, green, yeah. And um, so just for context, when we purchased them, they were, you know, named according to their collars. Yeah. So J- Lyric. Um, Lyric, I always want to call her Jada. Lyric was green stripe. Green stripe. And then there was also green. And then there was green. Which we when we went to purchase her, we were maybe thinking about green. green. They, but, were, they both looked exactly alike. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm sure green looks just like green stripe. Right. I'm sure they look a lot alike. They're they, the same body type. They're yeah. same, probably almost within an ounce of each other weight. Green, But Lyric was just more of a leader. Yeah. Green Green followed Green Stripe around. You know, Lyric was the leader because Lyric was the first one out. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so she was like the leader of everybody. Yeah. But I think that it's, that's one thing that I really appreciated about these breeders. And I know that there is a lot of um, controversy surrounding purchasing dogs from breeders, but for us knowing what we're getting is very important to us. And it's just a choice that we made and we have all the respect in the world for folks who want to get rescues because they need homes as well. But for us and our family, the best choice was to purchase from a breeder Um, But we were just very responsible, responsible about it and um, vetted our breeders. And one thing that really, really stood out about them was the fact that they observed them as having personalities, documented that. And um, also they had a family. So they had, you know, small children and things like that around. Um, Not things like that, but, you know, they were raised with a family. But it just always blows my mind when people act like animals don't have personalities like dog, like, or even when they make blanket assumptions because they're a particular breed, like Dobermans are like this all the time or whatever. Um, But it's very important to see them as having personalities because they do have personalities. Dog lovers understand that. And I feel like, we've kind of touched on that here as we're going through just their, their signs. So Mm -hmm. yeah, we can, we, we think it's important to understand our pets and so that we can interact with them better and just give them what they need. Mm -hmm. But we also recognize that the three of them are each their own individual being with their own individual set of needs and astrology is just one way that we explore that and kind of dig into that. And it, it, it's fun and interesting for us. Um, but yeah, 
yeah, I think that it's it's worth any pet owner getting into understanding their pet's zodiac signs and how that can lead to a better relationship with their pet. I know we spent a lot of time today discussing our pooches, our Cancer and Capricorn pooches, but on the next episode, we'll go more in depth on the other signs so that you all who don't have Cancer and Capricorn pets can understand them as well. And then we'll also go into the fire signs, fire and air signs, because we spent this entire time speaking or discussing earth and water signs. But yeah, tune in to part two. But thanks for tuning in and bye. We'll be back on soon. Bye.